right now, two out of three people in the United States of America live in an area that has a net zero goal that is going to keep pushing all of us to move forward. That's how we're going to grab the future. If we marry it with significant investments, we won't just grab that future, we'll win it. And uh, one of the things that struck me over the past week at COP26 is that there is uh, a sense of real urgency and commitment. Obviously a lot more work to be done, but you know, globally we have to make meaningful reductions in emissions. What LCRI does is also make sure in 2030, looking forward to 2040 and 2050, we have the tools in the toolbox to take out the last 20% on the electric sector and to also take the transportation industry and buildings from their glide path to deeper glide path. Right now in worldwide in the US, almost 20% of the energy that we use is electricity. 80% is not. In 2030, it could be, there are ambitious plans, it could be 25, 30%. In 2050, it could be 50% of the energy that we use is electricity. What happens to the other 50%? And that's really what the opportunity of Low Carbon Resource Initiative is. Give EPRI a lot of credit. Uh, they were able to generate an idea that in turn generated momentum and interest not only from EPRI's own members, but from outside of the membership. And has pulled in a number of other companies and actors. So I think to date, there are uh, around $111 million committed by 39 different companies to go look at um, the potential for low, low carbon resources like clean hydrogen. That LCRI work is not just EPRI, it's EPRI in conjunction, conjunction with the Gas Technology Institute, right? So you're seeing the level of partnership required and you're seeing membership coming in from or participation coming in from adjacent industries that are going to be the users and beneficiaries of that technology. In order to achieve global decarbonization, we must think about all of our resources, all of the tools, all of the collaborative innovation that's out there, and be able to bring these energy sectors together in order to come up with global solutions. We also work closely with the Electric Power Research Institute. They help us do cutting edge research to find the next generation of no carbon technologies so that we can be carbon free by 2040. The announcement on industrial clusters with the World Economic Forum. And so those industrial clusters are going to bring together both supply and demand so that they are co-located and can um, per sector reduce their carbon. For us at National Grid, we're looking to electrify our fleets, which I know uh, others in the EEI membership are doing as well to make sure that we're doing everything we can to minimize the impact. And what I see in other companies, both in the US and in the UK, is actually everybody stepping up and actually setting these ambitious targets. I also want to mention the role energy efficiency plays in helping us reduce our carbon emissions. Since 2007, the company has had uh, energy efficiency programs that have allowed us to take one million tons of carbon emissions out of the air. The best kilowatts that we don't use are those ones that we save by energy efficiency. I think we are seeing a blurring of line between electric utilities, gas utilities, and oil and gas because the interest in low carbon resources is among all three. Now, electric sector is still the tip of the spear. We have to get cleaner. How deep and how quickly we clean has to be really very thoroughly understood Otherwise, the unintended consequence of either reliability or affordability would be the biggest obstacle for the clean energy transition. Now, in the U.S., um, we were able to reduce carbon significantly since 2005 without hurting the GDP. So it's, it can't be done, um, although I'll say that we're going to go significantly faster and do a whole lot more. but. I think we can figure it out as long as we plan for it. We've got to think, we've got to take the long view while we're working on the short view. Some of the announcements that we've seen and the commitments that have been made over the last week, whether it's methane, uh, whether it's the phasing out of coal, some of the individual country commitments have been much bigger than 
perhaps we could have anticipated. It's going to require significant work at the federal level with policies, at the state level as well, uh, you know, to push areas like transportation and building to be able to fill the gap. But we're, uh, we're confident we can get there and uh, you know, we'll need partnership from across the industry, with government at, uh, at all levels, and frankly, partnership with our customers in other sectors, uh, because that's where a lot of the hard work will be done. But there is enough public investments that are going on that will give us a very rich data source to understand how these technologies perform in real life. But to do that, it can't be just LCRI and EPRI. It needs to be a village and national labs, universities, and then all of our members.